Hello everybody, welcome to this playthrough for Rookie Division with the tournament win for the Phantom Mansion tournament here in Gold Clash. The game video is sponsored by Gold Clash and Play Demic. And before we start, don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Also visit goldclashtommy.com for more Gold Clash related content for free. Last but not least, get the best guys on the market by going to patreon.com slash goldclashtommy. Link directly in the description down below. Can we get this video to 300 thumbs up? That would be very kind of you if you could do that. Also follow the info box on the right hand side for the club distance adjustment, elevation adjustment, what ball and club type I also suggest you to play with. Have in mind, those are my suggestions. Doesn't mean that you have to follow it, but there's always a plan behind it. All questions is directed to support at golfclashtommy.com. In the end though, let's freaking go to hole number one. For hole number one, we're looking to start with our driver here, which is an X mile level six. And I'm using four and a half bar top spin, three bars of side spin to the left. But look how I position my ball guideline. I want it to be just by the rough there on the left. And you may be wondering why. It's because the fairway slopes massively left to right. And if we do not make this adjustment here, we will see ourselves to almost a 100% certainty rolling into the rough on the right. Maximum distance with a 10% over adjustment and yes, we are not playing from max distance but we're still using maximum distance as a club distance to adjust for. We're gonna hit perfect in the end, I was hoping, but we hit great left. And here you will see that even with a great left we will not clip the bushes and we will not roll into the rough either. But with a perfect ball we would obviously be a little bit more right and that obviously would have been a better drive. But we're getting it down there and that that's what counts. Second shot, we play with a short iron. You can see that we are in complete minimum distance. And here you have a decision to make. You can either go with a lot of backspin and aim directly at the hole and bounce it towards the pin, or you go for a dunk. Me personally I would be going for a dunk because I feel comfortable going for a dunk. It doesn't mean that you have to be uh, comfortable, but I am. So the way that you are going to adjust if you're going to bounce towards the pin, not the dunk, bounce to the pin, is that gonna use minimum distance with a 10% over adjustment. If you're going to go for the dunk, you're using no elevation and still minimum distance numbers. So minimum distance numbers, no elevation is what I'm using here for the dunk. And you will see this ball drop into a lovely way for an eagle here on hole number one. So again, you decide which way you wanna go, which way you feel comfortable with, but I do believe this has to be a drop in the end. For hole and number two, we're looking to play with our Goliath or Backbone. You choose whatever club you feel the most comfortable with. And here I'm looking for the sticky spot. Look where I wiggle back and forth. You can see that the ball guideline is basically not moving. The only thing that is moving is my target itself. One bar backspin and I'm also using approximately 0.2 side spin to the left. The ball that I'm using is called the Navigator. It's a power one wind two side spin one ball. Adjustment is what I would like to be a medium distance with a 10% over adjustment here. And then we're going to take our shot. In the end, the clock is ticking down, but we managed to hit perfect. And we'll see the ball bounce on the fairway, getting towards the pin here. Unfortunately, we come in a bit short and a bit much to the right. So the thing that I would recommend us to do is to loosen up with the backspin a little bit, to play 0.8 backspin and then add 0.5 side spin to the left. That will do the trick and then we're gonna see ourselves having a very fun time here in hole number two. For hole number three, we're gonna play an interesting play here where we're gonna go on the right side, four and a half bar top spin, two bars of side spin to the left. And now um, you can see that I do stretch into overpower to make sure that I can see the ball guideline going straight down the middle. Once we have done that, ladies and gentlemen, we will be adjusting for a maximum distance with a 20% over adjustment. Once that is done, we will push up our club into max again. And this obviously to prevent us from having to use as much overpower as we otherwise would need if we wouldn't push up to max. Half a ball of curl to the left and just a little bit of 
a little bit of overpower not much you just want the needle to wobble a little bit faster than normal and that is what we're looking for bouncing on the fairway getting over the rough and we're looking to get into a yardage that is approximately 350 yards Second shot is with a Goliath, and here you can see that we are very close to maximum distance of our club. But as we do have Tailwind, you will see us adjusting down into the bunker. And as the mechanism of this game works, when you adjust from a higher to a lower point, you will lose distance. So instead of playing this shot maximum distance, no elevation, which would be the normal way of doing it, then, we're, then we should have played medium distance and no elevation instead. And here I do go something in between. I'm not playing medium, I'm not playing maximum, I'm playing in between medium and maximum. And that is enough to have the ball bounce into the rough, but not enough to give us the length of our shot that we do need. So we do need to adapt, we do need to play medium distance, no elevation, then we're not gonna go short in line, which is absolutely terrible. Use the Goliath to have the top spin on your long iron, the backbone or Saturn or the clubs in a lower level will not have as good amount of the top spin as For hole number four, I will be playing with my sniper. And here, for those of you playing with the sniper level seven or better, does have an advantage over those of us that do have a sniper level six or below. And the reason for that is the ball guideline. Here, with the sniper level six, I only have 4.0 ball guideline and will not see the ball guideline to the hole. So I will have to guess a little bit with the backspin and the position so to get it correct. I'm gonna use a 3.1 backspin I'm not using 3.1 in the video, I'm using 3 uh, backspin completely. So 3.1 backspin is what I want you to use. And then we're going to adjust 1 to 1, which means that I, will, I should have been adjusting 3.3 rings for 3.3 miles per hour. Bounce nicely on the fairway and you can see here we just barely get that one on the left side of the cup. Unfortunately, we do come in a little bit too, the, sorry, a little bit too hot. And look how much that slopes there in the end. And we're so close rolling down into the rough. This is by no means any a bad shot. But we need to get that little bit extra backspin. So we definitely make sure that we're not rolling into the rough on the back. If we do miss the hole in one. So hole number four in my opinion is a very good chance for a hole in one here in Rookie. For hole 5, I do believe we have a very good chance making an eagle here, but I would like you to play with a power 3 ball if you can. 4.5 bar top spin, 2 bars of side spin to the left. Then I'm stretching out to see the second bounce to be into the rough with the red ring by the rough line on the left. Here, once we have done that, we will be making an adjustment, and that adjustment is going to be maximum distance with no elevation uh, as our total adjust. Push up to max. And then it's time to take our shot. We're going to play with half a ball of curl outside to the left with a max overpower. And you may not think that max overpower is easy. I don't think it's easy either. But I do believe that the risk that we are taking with this drive is going to bring a massive reward for us as we will be in short term range to pin. If you don't feel comfortable in going for an overpowered shot, you can lay up short on the fairway that we actually have our first bounce on. But then the second shot will be very tough compared to the one that we're going to have now. Have in mind that you can hit great left and great right with your drive and you will still be on the fairway. Second shot, we play with a short iron towards the pin. And here you can see that there is minimum distance. We're going to move up to be on the green. And the reason I want to move up to be on the green is to make sure that we are going to bounce on a more flat area. And then when we are bouncing in an uphill slope as we're having there. I'm using backspin, one bar, aiming at the hole. And here, obviously, if you do have the thorn level 8 or better, you're going to have a good ball guideline here. The thorn level 5 does not really do the trick. And here, I'm going to have to guess a little bit how the rollout is going to be. And that's always difficult when it comes to, decide, it, it comes to getting the correct speed. Medium distance with a minus 10% under adjustment means that we're going to play uphill and the ball will then be affected less by the wind. Bounce nicely, comes in with perfect speed, right at the pin for a lovely eagle here on hole number 5.
For hole number six, we're gonna have the, in my opinion, the toughest hole in the whole tournament here. And here it would be a benefit from playing with a Kingmaker if you do have the possibility. But we're gonna try to keep this play through away from playing with Kingmaker and we then go with a Titan. Four and a half bar top spin, two bar side spin to the right. As you could see here, I'm aiming approximately two rings from the left rough in complete max distance with our target. Adjustment, maximum distance with a 10% over adjustment. Once that is done, we push up to absolute max. And once again, we're going to apply overpower. A lot of overpower this go around, but that is going to be, uh, be something that we need to. Not as much as max though, but we're going to have to have a little bit. One ring of overpower is what I'm using and half a ball of curl to the right. Those of you that feel that you want to play really aggressive, you can go with more overpower here. Make sure though to not go with max overpower if you do have six bars top spin on your drive because that will roll into the rough there at the top and that will be not as fun second shot and here you can see that i'm looking first and foremost to do go a rough bump but i do not have the ball guideline to, or like i do not have the top spin to do this type of shot then you may be wondering can't i play with the horizon here yes you can but if you play with the horizon you need to have one thing in mind great left or great right then you miss the rough so, uh, and if you want to gamble with that, fine. That's up to you to do. The thing that I do here is that I'm bouncing on the fairway, um, using two bars of left spin and then three bars of back spin and leaving the ball guy line short of pin, as once again, we have a tailwind and we're also going to have to uh, think about the rollout that we're going to have because we do not have a fully developed ball guideline. Maximum distance with a 30% over adjustment. Yeah, it is spooky as we can see the goals there, but 30% over adjustment is needed because it is so played so much downhill. And honestly, I do not expect this one to drop that much. If it does, it's a massive bonus because again, it's a very elevated shot. The second shot will that be so in the end if we push it too hard we might risk losing the eagle so in the end this is an eagle hole eagle hole for me but i wanted to put the finger at the rough bump a little bit uh, a little bit more here in the end when it comes to using the horizon For hole number seven, I'm looking to play a rough bump. And here we're looking to use the bottom of the yellow ring as, uh, as to be just by the bunker. I'm using two, uh, sorry, three bars of backspin and I want you to use 2.8. And you're gonna notice why I want you to use 2.8 in the end. Adjustment is going to be medium distance with a 25% over adjustment here for our shot. So in the end, we're looking to first and foremost adjust and we adjust for 3.6 rings. So we do adjust and then we're going to take our shot. So medium distance plus 25. Make sure you are centered into the adjustment ring here and then we are going to hit. Perfect. You may be wondering why do I go for a rough bump when I can use the fairway before the rough and bounce over the rough. But this because we are looking, we will have um, a difficult time bouncing on the fairway as it does first and foremost need a lot of backspin which would require a guardian. But then the Guardian in itself is not a good club in terms of ball guideline, which is going to make the hole in one being very difficult to get. In this case, we can use the rough and really put ourselves in a good spot making a hole in one. And I do believe we're going to need a hole in one or two if we're going to fight in the top in the tournament. For hole number eight, we're gonna attempt a, actually a very tough drive. And the reason I want to do this is because it would benefit us immensely by doing so. I'm using four and a half bar top spin, two bars of side spin to the left. I'm using a power two ball. You can use, uh, in this case, a power three ball if you want to stay away from overpower, sorry, stay away from stretching out. But we are playing with so many power three balls already. So here I want to play with a power two ball. I stretch out and I'm looking to double bounce over the rough. So I stretch out, I do adjust for maximum distance plus 25, and that is going to be 2.4 rings. Adjust, and then I'm gonna go with half a ball of curl to the left with a tiny, tiny little click of overpower. 
The ball is then going to bounce and it's going to bounce and put ourselves very nicely on the final piece of fairway there. And now we do have a good chance making an eagle. Sure, you can lay up short and ha still have a chance for an eagle by going with a long iron but as the second shot is so elevated and we need to use a lot of elevation short iron is going to be way better than long iron second shot as you can see here i'm using the runner why do i suggest the hornet then the reason i'm actually playing with the runner is because i didn't know how much topspin i needed for this shot but n noticing here that i need only three bars of topspin for this shot it means that we can play with a hornet even though in a low level and make sure to don't pack the thorn though because the thorn has uh, not enough topspin and that will create a mess for you you may be also wondering why do i bother playing a rough one when it can bounce on the fairway it's because when we are bouncing on the fairway we're gonna have a higher second bounce and a, a third bounce and that will all be affected by the wind if we do hit the rough, we will have a, just a minor second bounce to, uh, to where the wind is going to affect the ball, where the rest is going to be just a roll towards the pin, which makes this shot way easier to adjust for. Unfortunately, a great right, and we also needed maybe a click more topspin to that. A perfect would be better. I played that one medium distance with a 30% over adjustment. In the end though, uh, pack the Hornet is gonna be easier for you. The runner is not a club with a good accuracy, but the Hornet is. So I do feel that whole For hole number nine, we're gonna play to the center fairway. And here I'm using a power three ball, even though we could stay away from using that by playing with a power two ball instead so why do i use a power three ball then when we can play with a power two ball it's because the second shot the second shot will need power and as i want to play with either the horizon or the sniper then i will keep the the power three ball here so adding in this case you can see that i'm using three bars of top spin and one bar side spin to the right because I actually don't want to go as far as I can here. I do want to have just a controlled drive, getting enough distance so I can have a nice line towards the pin for the second shot. Adjustment, maximum distance plus 10. And once you have adjusted, you should push up to max. Bounce on the fairway. We see we're getting nicely over and we sit very nicely on the fairway. Nowhere near the rough on the left or the right. Second shot. Here you can see that I have the distance for the sniper, but the problem with the sniper here is that I don't have the top spin. You cannot play this shot if you don't have at least a sniper level 8, my friends. And that's why I'm also using this video. So you can see that sniper 6, ah, that's a no-go. Then we're going to have to bounce on the fairway, which is not bad, but it's definitely not going to be as consistent as the rough one when it comes to having a chance for an, for an albatross. The horizon would then be the club if you don't have a sniper level 8. Plus, so Horizon, if you don't have a Sniper level 8+, plus, otherwise a Sniper and the Rough Bump should be your play. If you play the uh, Rough Bump, you're going to play Club Distance combined with plus 10 adjustment. Here I play also Club Distance with plus 10 adjustment. Unfortunately, I hit great. A perfect ball would have been very close. But in the end though, I feel that this is a better chance than I was expecting it to be for an Albatross. Thank you so much everybody for watching this playthrough for Rookie Division with the tournament win here for the Phantom Mansion tournament in Gold Clash. The game video is sponsored by Gold Clash and Play Them. Make you make sure you hit thumbs up before you go, but also get the ultimate tournament guides on patreon.com slash goldclashtommy. Thank you so much for watching and good luck in your Gold Clash game.